occupying Jacksonville. And at this period, I was involved with the Battle of the Lusty, which was the largest battle fought in uh, Florida in this, during the war between the states. But Finnegan's Brigade then was sent to Virginia, where I served uh, in the Second Battle of Cold Harbor and the uh, Siege of Petersburg. And, but I became ill, but I, uh, before, and had to return to Florida before uh, General Lee's uh, surrendered out of that Fort Virginia. After following the war, I resumed my uh, employment as an agent for a steamship line. But, uh, being a little antsy, I thought maybe things would be better in Texas. Washington University and graduated 1903 with a law degree. After establishing his practice here in Jacksonville, in 1913, he was named a judge to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeal. Assuming his practice then, he was appointed attorney judge from 19... I'm sorry, he was appointed attorney general from 1938 to 1941. While serving on the circuit, Judge Gibbs had the opportunity to make an impact on the rights of others. And I will share two cases with you. The first case involved the nuns of St. Joseph and St. Augustine. They were arrested for teaching black students to read. After Judge Gibbs heard their story, he determined that they were being denied the privilege that was not denied to other citizens, and they were free. The other case involved the shameful story of the Sunbeam Camp. Prisoners there were subjected to humane treatment, lack of water, lack of food. They were beaten, and they were given forced doses of castor oil. Fifteen prisoners testified before Judge Gibbs. Eventually, the camp was closed and the prisoners were freed. After Judge Gibbs retired, he found the Duval Law Library, and he was the chairman of the biracial board of the Brewster Hospital here in Jacksonville. In 1946, Judge Gibbs died of a heart attack.
question, please. Many of you probably already know of his story aboard the Titanic, but I would like to tell you something about him if it helps me with my sadness. Robert Bateman married my sister, Emily Hall, in 1880. They had met while attending a Salvation Army meeting in England. Robert was educated there and obtained a medical degree. But being a Christian physician, he became interested in urban rescue work and entered the ministry at age 21. He founded and built, almost on his own, the Central City Mission, which used to stand at the corner of Monroe Broad and Monroe Streets. That part of the city was known as a villa. Built in 1904, 